Hello and welcome to the second part of the Level Builder 2. And in this part, I'm going to create a digital asset from what we have. And I'm also going to talk about instancing and how we can use our prefabs in these instancing slots. So this is the result that I last ended with. And I'm going to select everything and create a digital asset from it. So either we can go here, say new digital asset, or we could use here the subnetwork. And when we have the subnetwork, right click, create digital assets. And now we can save this where we want. So in here I saved it and again I'm directly saving this in my Unity project. So when I save it here it's directly also updated in Unity. And of course here we have our parameter menus. And first thing we want to do here is to go here to the nodes. And I want to expose the line or make the line editable. So go here to editable nodes, click on this icon and search for the curve. So curve one, accept and accept. So when I would load this in Unity, we would have the same result with also an editable curve. So here's my Unity scene and I have my HDA. I can drag and drop this. And now it's getting built over here. So notice also that the material is wrong because I'm in the HDR pipeline. Some materials are getting broken. But what I can see is that everything is working. So we have an editable line. So I can also see this menu to edit it. I can also press F1 to get more settings. As you can see, we can have multiple shortcuts to use this. And when I go in edit mode, I can just grab grab one of the points and just drag it around like this. And you can see that it is going quite fast and updating. So I can now build also a level over here, play around with the curve. I can edit certain lines. So you can see we can add lines and I can quickly get a shape here. It goes like this, or this, and go back here. And now I have my corridor. So this already works and the only thing left now is to find systems to then copy our prefabs on them. So I have a bunch of prefabs that I want to be pasted on here. So as an example here I have my wall pieces. So I have a bigger wall and I have a small wall. So now I want to, instead of using these uh, boxes, that's our, these are built by Houdini, I want to actually use something that I pre-built as a prefab. So these prefabs might be familiar to some of you because these are from previous tutorials like from the sci-fi series. Now jumping back here in Houdini and let's just delete this merge node for now and I'm going to need to revisit my copy to point system. And when I was working with instancing I can actually delete these copy to points nodes. So these are just for like previewing or checking if everything works. So, but for the moment, I will be deleting all of them. And also if you're wondering on how you can get information about all these instancing and what you could do with the plugin, definitely going to the documentation of the Houdini with Unity. And for example, here we can have attribute instances. So we will set an attribute that defines which prefab it should instance. So here we say, it's a Unity instance, and we can, for example, fill in the path to watch what prefab it should use. So in here, I'm going to create an attribute, and this attribute is called Unity instance. And make sure you're creating, make sure you are consistent with this name because it's very specific. And this is going to be a points class, and it's also a string. So in here, I'm going to fill in then what the path could be. So it's going to be something like assets and then certain location. So I will look that up. So in my case, this is assets for the sci-fi corridor prefab folder. And I want to have the big wall piece prefab. So that's set up. So when loading this in Unity, Houdini knows how to translate them in looking for the prefab. Further, a few things I want to do 
is I also like to use an add node here before and I like to here use the delete all geometry but keep the points. So this will make sure that it will delete all the geometry only having the points. And then also here afterwards I like to use a clean node. So with this clean node I can also remove attributes and groups and I'm going to control what the output, output will be. So right now this means that it's going to delete all the attributes but I don't want to deleting all the attributes I want to make an exception for the normal so I'm going to type in this and also want to make an exception for the unity instance of course so with this clean node if I would hold my mid mouse on it I can now control that it's only outputting the normal the points of course and the unity instance it might be possible that sometimes information can be conflicting when you are, for example, merging different networks together. So that's why I'm using a clean node, so, I'm, so I know what the output of my network will be. So it's quite consistent in outputting in attributes. Also, one more thing here. Currently, all my points are being deleted. So we need to disable this and this over here, so I can see my points again. Now I want to do the same here for this network as well. So these three nodes will be quite important in my system for creating the instances. And I will change this here to then my small ball. So I will look up the name and copy paste this. And now let's merge these together with a merge node. And I'm also going to use an output node to make sure that I'm always outputting this node here. So let's go over here, press save. And let's see in Unity, if I would rebuild my tool, will my instances be placed? And I can already see it working. So I can already see everywhere I have now my prefabs. So that was an easy way to do this. I also noticed one thing is that my prefabs are quite high compared to where I draw my line. So I might also look into that and I'm going to look for the reason why my line and my points are having so much difference and I'm guessing here that I probably over here deleted the wrong line yeah I deleted the wrong wrong line over here I should have inverted this and now this should be better also remember that I placed a transform here so if it's not good enough still, I can still, for example, fill in the value 3 in here, for example, or something else. So re rebuilding my tool, and now it's being placed better. So now it's closer to my line. You can also see that I, in here, my line went a bit up here, and then it went down here. But you can see that my tool ignores the height because we flattened that. So now we have already first look on the corridor and also now let's place the corner pieces. So it will be the same process with the instancing. I'm going to go over here, copy these nodes and place them over here. So these, I won't be needing them. You can still keep them if you want to, to double check if there are issues because they can be quite useful when you want to debug certain values. Uh, I'm going to copy paste this and again we need to fill in the correct location. So I have filled in a new corner model and now I can merge this with then over here. I will create a new merge node. So we have this new line and save this. Rebuilding the tool and now I have my corner points. You can also see here that these primitives should actually be rotated like this. So two ways we can do this. Either we just change the prefab. Like I can, as you can see, we still have prefabs over here. So I can go to my original prefab, select everything and rotate it. Or I can say I go back here into my network. And what I can, for example, do is we could reverse the normal, use a normal node, 
place this over here. And I don't want to calculate normals. And I want to reverse the normals. So as you can see, we can easily reverse the normals. So it depends on what you want. If you're not allowed to change the prefab, then we need to change the Houdini network. If you're allowed to change your prefabs, then we can easily change the prefab, of course. So change, save, rebuild the tool. And now I have the correct placements of my models, as you can see. So now the tool works like it should be. And I can still go in edit mode, select a certain part and change this like that. So it depends on you on how many instances you're going to place because it's going to slow the tool down a little bit. But later we will also build a building mode to just build instead of having everything ready. Now let's also create a floor for this corridor. So from the floor, it will also be starting from this shape. So I'm going to copy this object merge node again. I would also often color a object merge node. So in here, let's for example, give this a color. So I already know that this is a reference to something else. So from this geometry, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to just divide it so be, or triangulating it. And I'm going to in here, click on the first two options. So don't generate silvers and small angles. And as you can see, it made the geometry a bit better, especially the last one. Like I like what it is doing, for example, here. It's making it nicely clean over here. Then next, then I also want this to be unwrapped. And I'm gonna use the UV projection over here. And I'm going to initialize it. So basically, this is automatically trying to find what would fit best. And I'm going back to transform. And my UV, I'm going to set this to a square shape. And I'm going to start with 25. So this also means that my texture will be tiled. So if I would place down a quick shade, I could see then a pattern, a checker pattern. And I can see that my texture will then be tiled. And I can also expose this value later on. I can also in here reference this for the moment. So I can expose this value so I can change the UV scale in Game Engine. So what I will be doing also here is creating a Unity uh, material. So Unity material. And we can fill in the path to where I have a floor material. So here in my case, I have a floor material in my base material folder and I'm just going to fill in assets base material floor one so something like this assets base material floor one and let's plug this in and see if this is going to work so assets save and this didn't give me any problems so it places the floor and it found the material so that was pretty good so also make sure to sometimes double check what it is outputting. So at the moment it's only outputting normal position, unity material and UVs. So I'm sure this is not conflicting with my instancing because there are cases that I had before where it could be possibly conflicting with my instancing. What I also know is that the order in the merge node is also very important. So in here I changed the order. So my first input is the walls my second input is my floor and my last input last line is then my corner if i save this and build this in unity you might get some weird results so in here i notice that there that there is a chance that you might get a result like this so what you can see that everything before my floor geometry the instances worked correctly everything after the floor geometry the instances got wrong. So that's just something that I noticed to keep in mind that if this happens to you, just make sure you check the order which is going to be placed. So my floor comes as last because it doesn't include instancing geometry. So when the order is correct, it should be fine. Now next I want to build a ceiling because right now everything is just open and we can do the same like the floor, we can create a unique geometry 
in this case, but I'm actually going to use prefabs. So you can choose between creating geometry, so that's still possible, we can still create procedural geometry, or we can go fur further with our prefabs and build a system to then also place prefabs in the height. So again, here this is done, and I'm going to add a frame around this, so I know this is the floor. And just to make sure later on, I'm going to place a merge node here. And this merge node will merge always the floor as lost. So later on, I can just keep plugging in instances over here. And then the last step is then to plug in my floor. So in that order. So from my ceiling, I want to start actually from my snapped line. So this node over here. So I'm going to copy the merge node and I will be replacing this by my other output. So this is then the shape where my corridor will go. As you can see, it's nicely following that line. And for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it fairly simple for the, for the ceiling system. What I first be doing is creating a attribute, a normal attribute, just so I can control where they are facing. So the name will be N for normal. This is a point float and it has the size three. So now we can fill in a normal direction. So a normal is a vector. So if I would fill in here one, they were now facing up. You can make this more complex by, for example, using a poly frame. So poly frame nodes. And in this poly frame nodes, we can then, for example, disable the normal name and fill in the normal in here and set this to first edge and now the normal nicely follows the edge as you can see and you can use this to get sort of a certain flow or direction in your ceiling so maybe there is also pipes in your ceiling and you can use this then to have a nice flow in your ceiling based on these normals but i wouldn't be doing that it's just a nice idea if you want to for example improve the system or build more then i'm going to place down a transform node and this transform is basically the height of the ceiling so this controls how high it should be so i know that this is my ground level and i also want to make sure that my ceiling is of course higher than my floor so let's fill in maybe 10 as value and i will immediately expose this value so i will go here to my asset menu properties go over here and set this to height ceiling apply oh, and while i'm here i might as well grab the uv i did over here so you can change the uv scale so floor uv and save that as well so now i can control the height and this system is actually done so we have the points and we have normal so those are the two important things for the system is to calculate points and give it a right normal so again copying these three instancing nodes place them over here and i need to change the prefab so i copy paste the name i can now easily replace that by my prefab and let's put a frame around this and merge this with my notes here and let's save the system i'm going to rebuild the assets and now i have my ceiling as it should be and i can also see here i have my sliders one thing i didn't adjust is the range so they are not properly set up so normally you should see like this point but i didn't set a nice range so we need to go back, open this menu again. Let's put a decent range. So from, let's say, 2 to 12. And the floor scale should be from 1 to, let's say, 30. And apply. And rebuild it. And now I have a better control here in the scale. So I can fine tune the height more. I think it should be around 8 or 9, like this. So it nicely fits somewhat in my scene. 
So that's also done. So we have a basic ceiling for my corridor. What I want to do as last now is to add a small system for placing a light. So if I would turn off my main light of the scene, um, my corridor is currently very dark. So that's how this sort of like my scene is set up. It's quite dark scene. So I can also build a system that places prefabs with light in them. So I don't have to also manually place lights. And again, I will be starting for the light system from the ground plane. So we'll grab the node again. Then I will be using a poly expand node. So this is a quite cool node that works on 2D shapes. So poly expand. And as you can see, it already uh, filled the hole in here, but I don't want that. I want to set the simple reach to the alternative reach. And now it's getting a bit better. And when I adjust the settings, it would be even better. So more settings I want to adjust is here also set it to offset surfaces. And I want to increase the offset. And as you can see, this gives a quite interesting result. So it extrudes the line on both sides. And when lines come together, it automatically stops. So this is quite interesting. Now I also want to disable the outside. So that means that only uh, offset in inside the shape. So what is also important here, like I said before, make sure this is set to the alternative one. Then I'm going to convert this to a line. So convert line. So now a line shape. And I also want to use a poly wire node. So poly wire. And I want to use a group node to then delete all the lines on the edges and only keep the lines on the inside. So again, I will be using a group with a bounding region. So make sure this is set to points, bounding regions. And now we have procedurally selected these outer points. And now we can blast this away. And my result is now this inner line, which is then used for my lights. Now there is also another way that we can do this. So I use the groups with bounding objects a lot. What you can also do is, for example, use point clouds. So if you know a little bit more about Houdini or effects, you can sort of like use point clouds to filter out these points instead of always putting groups and blast nodes. But that's something on the side. Now, one thing I want to also do here is, so everywhere I have a point, I uh, will have a light model. One issue with this is when we have a very long corridor, no lights are placed at the moment. You can see that here we have one straight line. So I want to use a resample. And again, resample is used to create more points. And I want to control how much lines I'm outputting. So in here I can, for example, fill in maybe 10 and now I have here a couple of lights added. So we can increase this to 15 or more. So we don't have too many lights. So we can balance this number on what you would like to have. Then I'm going to fuse this together because we have a lot of overlapping points at the moment. So I will be fusing them together. So we only have the points that we need. And then I want to transform this as well. And I want to transform this based on the height of the ceiling. So we'll be going to the ceiling and I will be copying this value and paste it over here as well. So these are connected to each other. Then again, I want to put in a normal direction and it was actually a good idea to just copy paste this whole network and place it over here. I think that's a better idea. And I'm going to use this then instead. And in here, we also have the instance and I need to put the right prefab in here. So I changed the name to my lamp model. And let's merge this with the other ones. And I'm going to place a merge here. So I don't have to always go that far to merge it. And placing a frame and save the system. So I'm rebuilding it now and let's see if my lights are working. And I indeed have some lights here and there 
placed automatically. So also everything in my scene is also real-time light. Just to keep it procedural, I can quickly adjust it. So as you can see, we now have a system that procedurally also lights my scene. And I can easily click my prefab and delete it if I would not be happy or if I want to customize the lightning more. This is just to get a, get a base pass and get some lightning in my scene. So that was it for most of the tutorial. There is one more thing I want to show you. I'll talk a little bit more about the instancing. And in here, some of you might notice this, that we have automatically got these instancing inputs. So by default, it will create these instance inputs where we see our prefabs that we used and these are then used to instance. Now going back here to Houdini, we can also expose this string value if you want to. So I can go here to my menu and I can just drag and drop this string value and now this is exposed. So I can just call this model large wall or something like this. And now I can define the path also. Uh, we can also take this even further and we have some custom string parameters we can use and if we type this value, the hue asset path, if you are typing this in our tag name, we can have here a specific new menu in Unity. So also let's do this. So I'm going to go here and add a specific tag name which is called the hue asset path and I'm going to save this. And now my tool is be rebuilt. And as you can see, I have now this very specific menu here. And I can click here on this icon and I can scroll to my whole project to select a certain model I want to use. So this can also be a great way of controlling which prefabs are used or not. So you can do this for all the prefabs you have. So right now, everything is sort of more hard coded in Houdini but we can still also here change the prefabs over here. But know that this exists and we can always just drag and drop a new model in this and then it will update in here. So that was it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.